All right, welcome back to our remote production course. Following along with the video, sorry, with the book, we are going over NDI Bridge and some cloud production solutions to look at the benefits of putting OBS and vMix in the cloud. Let's jump into it. So I want to talk about NDI sources and bridging them into the cloud. Because if you've gotten this far, you've probably used NDI. And I want to make sure that you guys know about the NDI tools that are available for free for you to get started with IP video. I, I would be remiss if I didn't go over this. There's a lot of different tools. There's an NDI webcam tool that allows you to use your iOS or Android phone uh, to bring video sources directly into uh, OBS. You can send uh, basically NDI into uh, Zoom, into anything that creates a virtual webcam. So this is really, really cool. Um, Studio Monitor is one I'll, I'll launch up real quick to show this one. Studio Monitor is a tool that can be used to really quickly connect to any video source and control it on the network. So this is a really cool source. You could a uh, free free IP tool. You can record video um, and all kinds of stuff like that. We have NDI Bridge, which is one we're going to focus on in this course, bridging two local area networks together, essentially allowing you to do remote production. Um, there's a lot here. NDI Router allowing you to route things. So these tools are really kind of the backbone of NDI. And today we're going to talk about the bridge tool. But I wanted you to know you can get these tools for free at NDI.tv. All right, cool. So NDI Bridge allows you to transport video over a public area network. And they're using our UDP. And what it does is you can have, I think I've got a pretty good diagram here. You can have a host hosting the bridge. And then the host takes that in the host information there's a public ip address a port number and an encryption key and they send it to the to the person who wants to join right the client joins the host so there's a little bit of networking knowledge needed to set this up you got to have your outside ip address which not everybody has you might need to contact your internet service provider to get that you're going to need to set up a port on the router so that you can get the video to flow through there. And NDI provides some documentation on this. Then the far end side, once that the host is set up, the far end side is very easy to set up. You just type in the credentials, click join, and boom. It's as if these two networks are joined together. And I have a video I'm going to link to below that shows using a PTZ Optics SuperJoy on the far end and having the ability to connect your bridge from one end to the other. And then what happens is, is that on either side, they can see the NDI sources on either side of that network. So what we're going to do here, you can see on the left that the host has the IP address, the port number, the encryption key all set up. And then it clicks the start button to host the NDI bridge. Then in Studio Monitor, I'm just going to use that as my example here. On the right hand side, what you'll see is that we have the ability to control that camera and connect to it. And what happens is, is when we right click Studio Monitor, you're going to see all the sources come up and all the sources will be nested under the bridge connection between the source. So I can see all the NDI sources from the far end. I can connect them into vMix, into OBS, into any system that uses NDI. Now all of the sources from the far end are available to me on the local end. It's a very powerful technology for connecting two systems together. So that's what bridge does. It does require a little bit of network connectivity, a little bit of IP networking knowledge. Hopefully you've learned enough in this course to get started with that. But this is what it will enable. And it passes through video, it passes through control, it passes through tally light information all over the public internet. 
So we talked a little bit about setting all of this up, and if you don't have an outside IP address, you can use a dynamic DNS provider, such as NoIP, to just get a host name for your, address, for your outside IP address. So oftentimes, internet service providers don't provide an outside IP address unless you ask for it, unless you're a business potentially. So you can use dynamic DNS to get a host name that is essentially giving you your outside IP address uh, through a host name. And hopefully you understand a little bit about DNS from the previous courses. So all of this is starting to make sense now. Once you establish a connection on both ends, you are able to do all of the things that you can do with NDI uh, from the far end on the remote end as well. So it really allows you to, you know, pass through NDI Bridge and you can run NDI Bridge in a virtual machine. So if you're running a virtual machine, now you can send all of your clients, you can set up a virtual machine to host NDI Bridge in the cloud, and then you can have all the clients join that. So it's a very powerful tool. Now, on the flip side, I also want to talk about SRT, because SRT has become a very powerful tool for remote production as well, because SRT was designed to be used over the public internet from the very beginning, and it does a great job of encryption, jitter protection, and packet loss over the public internet, and it has wide support because it's open source. It's supported in OBS, in Wirecast, and in vMix. So you can set up SRT to send streams directly to your server, right? Or your, your video production system in the cloud. And vMix is a great example. A lot of professionals use vMix with SRT. And vMix can bring in those SRT video inputs, switch them, and then stream them in the cloud. And this is kind of how it will work. Uh, you can set up PTC cameras with SRT functionality, stream them to vMix in the cloud, and then vMix can do the switching and output all of it via RTMP to YouTube and Facebook. On the remote end, whether you're wherever you are in the world, you can control that vMix system in the cloud with just a keyboard and a mouse, just like you would a remote desktop. So it's very, very powerful stuff. You know, the key takeaways are that you can remotely produce video in a variety of ways. You can use NDI Bridge, which is totally free. You can set up a vMix in the cloud that's not free. Suddenly you've got to start using, um, you know, servers in the cloud and, and, and host it in the cloud. Or you can use something like PTZ Optics Hive, which takes care of a lot of this for you and provides you with a cloud-based interface for doing remote production. So it's really up to you. There's a lot of different ways to do remote production. Just wanted to share a few of those with you as we wrap up this course on remote production. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm here to answer questions. Let us know in the comments below. We're here to answer them for you. And I hope you have. we can kind of expand upon this course as new technology comes out. And I hope you enjoy the last couple chapters of this course, which allow you to kind of explore the future of video production. All right. Thanks for taking this course.